Good afternoon, boys and girls. My name is Kimberly Horg. I am the writer of Atnes, Santa's Sister in the South Pole. This is the book that I am going to be reading to you, and I hope you enjoy it. I dedicated this book to all the Atnes and all of us. Many people might know that Santa has a little sister that has always been completely opposite of him. Even her name is spelled Santa backwards. Atnes lives in the South Pole, the opposite side of the Earth from the North Pole. Atnes lives on a large iceberg in a big igloo. Her loneliness and inability to make toys to play with has made her envious of her brother, who is always surrounded by friends, family, and toys galore. Who needs toys or family? Atnes grumpily says to herself. Atnes has no interest in making toys for little boys and girls. Instead, she plots how to steal and ruin toys. During Christmas time, Atnes tries to figure out ways to stop Santa. All her past attempts have failed, but this year, she has a foolproof plan to halt the distribution of gifts. This Christmas, there is no way my meddling brother can stop me, she proclaims as she smiles at her only friend in the world, the great Skua Bird. Atnes has a sleigh, just like Santa's, but instead of flying reindeer, her sleigh is carried by the great Skua, who is known as the Pirate of the Sea. They are two of a kind because he bullies other birds and steals their food. It's a picture of Atnes and her um, best friend, the skua bird. His strong and powerful wings are able to carry the sleigh through the harsh climate conditions. The South Pole is one of the coldest places in the world, even colder than the North Pole, so the skua is the only animal that will step foot on its land. And this is true factual information. Its large barrel chest and white wings are its trademark, but from a distance it's sometimes said to resemble a large buzzard. He makes loud noises, noises similar to a witch's cackling. Ha ha ha! When he flies, some people think they fly with witches. It is rumored that the birds befriend witches and their gigantic size and strength are due to magic spells. The birds quack like ducks when they're happy and croak like frogs when they're mad. My beautiful skua understands why I think Santa should not give gifts on Christmas, Atnes says while petting her friend on the head. He is always trying to make me look like the bad guy. When he is the one spoiling children. Atnes is a grump. It is dark for months at a time in the South Pole, and when it's winter in most places, it is summer there. So Atnes and the Skua work nonstop on ways to stop Santa. This year, she is attempting to follow Santa. After he drops off the gifts, she plans on sneaking into every house after him to replace the gifts with lumps of coal. Last year, she traveled to the North Pole and put glue in every color of paint, hoping the toys would stick to the bag and couldn't be delivered. It didn't work. Somehow, children still got new toys that were not sticky. 
The year before, she mixed up the paint colors so red wagons were painted black. And if that wasn't bad enough, she replaced the stuffing and stuffed animals with rocks. Can you imagine getting a rock stuffed animal? How horrible that would be? Christmas still went on and the toys she tried to ruin were repainted and restuffed in time for the holiday. Her plan this year is foolproof because Santa is on a tight schedule and will not have time to deliver new toys once he finds out they've been turned into coal. He won't know what happened and the children will stop thinking he is Mr. Nice Guy. She laughs as she is going over her plan in her head. What gives him the right to decide who is good and bad anyways? And Christmas isn't about giving gifts. Atnes is preparing for her long journey by memorizing the map Santa uses to deliver the toys. It gets foggy this time of year, so she wants to make sure if she loses him in the fog that she will remember where to go. The day Atnes has waited for all year long is finally here, Christmas Eve. She's dressed from head to toe in black with the exception of her favorite green and white striped stockings. Okay, my big feathered fiend, it's time to go, she shouts as she jumps in the sleigh. The gigantic bird flaps his wings so hard that the wind carries the sleigh off the ground, spinning into circles. Take it easy, Atnes screams as she locks the harness from the bird to the sleigh. The sleigh streaks through the sky as fast as lightning. Can you imagine that? Atnes arrives at her first destination, and sure enough, the house has presents under the Christmas tree. She quickly stuffs the presents into her bag and pulls out a couple dirty pieces of coal. She slyly tosses them under the tree and scales the chimney wall. So far, her plan is working like clockwork. She has been to over a million houses and has replaced every gift under the tree marked from Santa with coal. She can see Santa's sleigh through her binoculars, so she's not too, he is not too far ahead of her. Then something unexpected happens at her next stop that not only changes her plan, but changes her life. Are you Mrs. Claus? A small boy says for from behind her. Atna spins around to see the small boy lo looking curiously at her take gifts from under the tree. No, child, I'm Atnes, Santa's younger sister from the South Pole. She states with a blank expression on her face. The boy comes closer to her and looks her over from head to toe. Why are you here instead of Santa, he says to her while he inches forward for a better look. She is caught off guard. Atnes has never actually spoken to a child before, so she does not know what to say and blurts out, uh, Santa's sick, so I'm taking over this year, kid. The boy then gives her a hug, and because she has not had a hug from anyone in so long, a tear forms in the corner of her eye. He continues to tell her his name is Sebastian. He asks Santa to bring his sister Sadie a puppy for Christmas. The orphans moved in with their grandparents last year, and young Sadie has been dreaming of a dog to call her own. This makes Aunt Atnes rethink what she is doing. Not only is she stealing, but now she has stooped so low to take a puppy away from a child. 
Atnes felt so bad that she put the gifts back under the tree. She reached in her bag for the noisy package that was bothering her. The boy, overjoyed at the sight of the new family pet, reaches in his pocket and hands her a pen. Write your name under Santa's name so it reads from Santa and Atnes, he said with a grin. When Atnes leaves, the boy hugs her again goodbye, and as she crawls up the chimney, the tears begin flowing down her cheeks. I have been wasting my time and my life, dear old friend, she says in a low voice. The gigantic bird has never heard her talk like this before, and he is utterly shocked at what he's hearing. Let's do the right thing and return the, and turn this sleigh around, Atnes cries. One by one, Atnes re-delivers the toys to each house on her list and collects her precious coal for her furnace at home. She feels happier and happier with every gift she gives back. And at the end of the night, she decides to make one last stop, the North Pole. Why, Atnes, what an unexpected surprise, Mrs. Claus says when she lands her sleigh in front of her house. I want to apologize to you and to my brother for all the years I've tried to destroy the toys and interfere in your plans, Atnes says in a sincere voice. I am truly sorry. She then steps out of the sleigh and gives Mrs. Claus a big hug. Mrs. Claus is suspicious at first, but is so filled with holiday cheer, she invites her in for some hot chocolate. The two sit and talk until Santa arrives with his reindeer. Santa is frantic when he sees her sleigh in front and runs in through the door. He shouts to his sister, what are you up to now, Atnes? Mrs. Claus interrupts him and gently puts her hand on his shoulder. Suddenly, Atnes runs over to him and tightly wraps her hands around Santa. I've been wrong, and I'm sorry, she says in a broken voice, unable to keep the tears back. Santa not only forgave her, he was so relieved and filled with joy to have his sister back, he asked her to join his toy production team. Needless to say, that year and for many years to come, Atnes, Santa, Mrs. Claus, and the reindeer and, of course, the great Skua ended up having a very Merry Christmas. That's always good to have friends and family around on Christmas. I wrote this book, and the illustrator for this book um, was my friend and artist, Brian Broughton. And I hope you enjoyed reading, having me read the story of Atna, Santa's sister in the South Pole. I hope everyone has a very Merry Christmas this year. Thank you for listening to my story.